Here we're working on semester two final exam review. Talking about our right triangle. So if we're going to do sine of R, we're going to look at Sokotoa to help us determine what sine is. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So from the R's perspective, the opposite side is across from it. This would be considered opposite. This would be considered adjacent to the R, which is next to. And of course, across from the 90 is a hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of R is going to be 15 over 25. And of course, that can be reduced. Five goes into that three times, five goes into that five times. So sine of R is really three over five. Cosine of R, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So from the R's perspective, the adjacent side is 20 and the hypotenuse of course is 25. So that's 20 over 25. Again, five seems to go into those. So that's four fifths. Then it asks for tangent. You need to know the ratio for tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. From the R's perspective, the opposite is the 15 and the adjacent is a 20. So this is 15 over 20. Five goes into that three times, five goes into that four times. So notice all the fractions are a little bit different Write each answer as a reduced fraction. That's what we did. And write each number as a decimal. So this is going to be 0 0.6. This is going to be 0 0.8. This is going to be 0 0.75. We don't need a calculator to do sine of anything. We're just doing the fraction itself. So because 5 goes into 36 times, 5 is going to go into 3.6 times. Okay, we're using trigonometry to solve for a side of a right triangle. Notice what we have. We have a right triangle, we have an angle, 59, and we know one of the two sides that we're looking for. We know this, the opposite. From the 59's perspective, this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. So thinking about Sokotoa, more times you write it, the better off you'll be. You probably want this on your note card. Opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent, that's gonna be tangent. That's how you decide which trig function you're gonna use. You always do the trig function of an angle. Tangent of 59 equals opposite over adjacent. Now it's trickier to solve this when the variable is on the bottom of the fraction. So we're going to cross multiply x times the tangent of 59 equals 1 times 17. So then we're going to divide by the tangent of 59. So we have 17 divided by the tangent of 59. You need to be sure you're in degree mode. Okay, degree mode is determined by hitting the mode button, and you'll see degree is highlighted there. If you're not sure, you can do sine of 30, and that should be 0.5. But 17 divided by tangent of 59 is 10.21. So that would be our value of x. Always notice that if this is 59, the other acute angle is going to add up to 90. 
So that's going to be 31. The 17 is across from the bigger angle, so a smaller number has to be across from a smaller number. If the angle is smaller in the same triangle, then the side across from it is going to be smaller. 10.2. Okay, and this one, again, you got to use Sokotoa to help you decide. Look at the angle. Determine what's across from it. That would be opposite. Determine the leg next to it. That's the adjacent. And across from the 90 is the hypotenuse. Label those out. And then you can look at it as opposite over hypotenuse and we see that that's going to be sine sine of our angle sine of 39 equals opposite over hypotenuse again our variables on bottom so we've got to do some cross multiplying to get that variable by itself. So that's going to bring the variable up to the sign. 39, 1 times 37 is of course 37. Now we want to get D completely by itself, so we're going to have to divide in this case. A lot of people make a mistake, and yes, they write the proportion. Yes, they show the crisscross but then they end up multiplying these two. Now do what it says. Show your steps. Don't worry about writing too much. Get that straight. You gotta divide. 37 divided by sine of 39. So D is gonna be 58.8. .8. If this is 39, this has to add up to 90, so it's going to be 41, 51 actually. So across from 51 is going to be larger than across from 39, and across from 90 is going to be the largest. So we're 58 here, and that's definitely larger than what that was. It's got to be larger than 37. Okay. okay, the shadow of a lighthouse is 19 feet. And the angle of elevation, if you're standing down here at the tip of the shadow and looking up, that would be a 75 degree look up. The angle of elevation. Find the height of the lighthouse. So maybe you want to rewrite that. So we have the opposite, we have the adjacent, so opposite and adjacent we're going to use tangent of 75 equals the opposite side, the height, over the adjacent side, which is a shadow of 19. Okay, here when we cross multiply, we really only have to multiply one direction because our unknown is on top of the fraction. We don't need, I mean it's only one, so I guess that doesn't matter, one times h is h. But this is 19, tangent of 75 equals your height. 19, tangent of 75 equals your height. 70.9. That's the height of the lighthouse. To simplify, to simplify, we want to break this down into perfect squares. So can somebody share with me, what is a perfect square that goes into 75? Uh, 4 is a perfect square, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. Those are all perfect squares. Which one of those numbers goes into 75? Everyone in here should know. 
25 times 3. That makes 75. There's other ways you could do it. 5 times 15 is another good way, but that's not perfect square. You want to use perfect square when you can because it's faster. What's the square root of 25? 5. So the answer is 5 root 3. Over here, we have a radical in the denominator. So we have to, it's called rationalize the denominator. Maybe before I rationalize it, I will simplify the 14 and the 7. It looks like we can do that. To rationalize the denominator, we're going to multiply that radical to the top and the bottom. That's taking this fraction and times it by a fraction of 1. So this is 2 root 3. Root 3 times root 3. What does that equal? Root 3 times root 3. It's going to be 3. Let's give it a try. Let's pretend you don't know. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. You don't even have to think 9. 3 times 3 is 9, so the square root of 9 is 3. We all agree with that. So root 3 times root 3 is squaring a square root. You get the number that's inside. You get 3. This is 3. And that's all you can do. You can't simplify that. You cannot cross off the 3's. The radical 3 is different than the non-radical. Square root is a type of radical. Looking on the next side, we should use trig inverse to calculate angle measurements. So if we're supposed to find the measurement of angle A, again, this would be the opposite side. This would be the adjacent side, adjacent leg. And of course, this is your hypotenuse. So I'd encourage you to write those on your sheet. Whenever you're doing your question, be sure you know where the opposite and the adjacent and the hypotenuse is. Now we think about Sokotoa. We're working with the opposite, 37, and we're working with the adjacent, 29. Opposite and adjacent, that's tangent. So we're going to do tangent from the A perspective, and that's 37 over 29. Now they want us to know what A is. What's the value of A? So to do that, we're going to do what's called tangent inverse. We're going to switch these two. We're going to put tangent, and we use the little negative 1 to say inverse. And this is where we put the side measurements in. And that's going to equal the measurement of angle A. So tangent inverse, if you look closely, you'll see tangent, and then you'll see the negative 1 right above it and cosine and cosine inverse and sine and sine inverse. You can look at your calculator. So to get to that, we have to hit second and then the tangent button. And that gives us tangent inverse of 37 divided by 29. You can close the parentheses if you want. If your calculator does not automatically put parentheses there, you need parentheses there. You don't want to say tangent of 37 and then divide that by 29. You want to be sure you're doing tangent inverse of 37 over 29. And that gives us the angle of 51.9. They're asking it to the... Oh, nearest degree, if this is 
51.9 is a measurement of angle A, you might say it is 52 degrees. They're asking for the nearest degree. This is the nearest degree. But I would definitely show my work, I would show my calculation, and then you do your rounding after that. On this side, we're looking for, again, it happens to be the measurement of angle A. You can call it that if you want, or just call it angle X. Your choice across from it is your opposite. Across from the 90 is the hypotenuse. That's going to be opposite hypotenuse. It's not adjacent hypotenuse. That's not opposite adjacent. It's opposite hypotenuse. Okay, so this is sine of X or A, whichever you want to label it as, opposite over hypotenuse. You can only solve for one unknown. So this time we have an angle unknown, where in the previous problems on the other page, we had a side unknown. Right now we have an angle unknown. So we're going to say sine inverse and we do the sides equals x degrees. Since it's not angle x, really, I'm not going to say measurement of angle x like I did here. You could do that for a. But x, it's just x degrees. It's just notation. So sine inverse, you have to hit the second, then the sine to get the negative 1 up there. That's sine inverse of the side measures, 7 divided by 18. This is how you calculate an angle value. And we get 22.9. And to the nearest degree, that would be 23 degrees. That's what x would be, 23 degrees. Okay, solving the right triangle. When you solve a right triangle, you're trying to find the other three pieces. We have an angle value to find, we have a side value to find, and we have a hypotenuse to find. That would be the adjacent. So, we know that 90 minus 51 gives me 39. So, the measurement of angle V equals 39. Opposite over hypotenuse, this would be your hypotenuse. You should label it as so. This is your adjacent. You should label that. So opposite and hypotenuse, that's sine. Right, I won't write it here. We'll write our answers there. So this is going to be VD. So sine of 51. From the 51's perspective, the 14 is opposite. And VD is the hypotenuse. So again, just as we've done before, VD sine of 51 equals 14. Then we have to divide by the sine of 51. And we get 14 divided by sine of 51. That gives us 18.0. All right, so then if we're going to find MD, MD, you could do Pythagorean theorem, but we could do opposite, because you want to use the 14, opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent is tangent of 51 equals the opposite side over the adjacent side. Again, we're going to switch these two. So if you start to get good at this, you just switch them. You're bringing the 
MD on top and you're dividing by the tangent of 51, just like we've done on each one of these. So this is 14 divided by the tangent of 51. And that gives us 11.34. So if we're rounding to the nearest tenth, we could have called this just 18. If we're rounding to the nearest tenth, we could call this 11.3. And that's solving. Okay? Good job. For question 21, we're still going to solve. So we're looking for the measurement of angle A, the measurement of angle C. We know they add up to 90, but I don't know their numbers. And we're looking for side AC. So, you can find whichever piece you want to first. Let's look for angle A. Angle A, thinking about Sokotoa, opposite and adjacent. So, tangent of A equals the opposite over the adjacent. And we want to switch the A in the fraction. So, that makes us use tangent inverse. To solve for an angle, you need to use inverse, tangent inverse, really any of the trig inverses, but in this case, we have to use tangent. This is the measurement of angle A. So we can use our calculator. And second tangent, we'll put the negative one on your calculator, that'll be tangent inverse. If your calculator doesn't show parentheses, you must have parentheses if you're inputting a fraction. 16 divided by 20. You can close them if you want. You don't have to. And it gives you the angle. The angle of this triangle rounded to the nearest tenth. So we look at the hundredth, and that's five or bigger. So we make this say 0 0.7, 38.7. Then to find the other angle, what relationship do those two angles have? What do we know about those two angles? The acute angles of a right triangle, what do they do? A and C are going to be complementary. They're going to add up to 90 degrees. So to calculate the measurement of angle C, you can just subtract angle A from 90. Some people like to use 180 with all three angles. That's fine. Subtract 90 from 180 and you're down to 90. Subtract the 38 so 90 minus 38.7, we get 51.3. Those are degrees. So now we're down to our last side. You could use Pythagorean theorem. So what we don't know is AC. 16 squared plus 20 squared. So 256 and 400. That looks like that is 656. And if we take the square root of 656, no, typed in the wrong thing. How'd that happen? So the square root of 656, 25.6. There they are. 
And our last question, which side is the longest side? You need to know your angles. Your largest angle is going to be across from the longest side. Your smallest angle will be across from the shortest side. So you can determine the longest side by which one is across from the largest angle. We had to subtract from 180 to figure out this was 73. Remember, they said this is not drawn to scale, so don't just assume. Do it by the numbers.